Well, as promised, we have a very special guest with us today, uh, Archbishop-elect Richard Henning, Bishop of the Diocese of Providence, and soon to be Archbishop of Boston. Archbishop-elect, great to be with you. Good to be today. with you too, Bishop. Thank you. And I'm sure this happened with, with great suddenness and has taken you by surprise. I know it has for all of us. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling these days? Uh, well, it certainly was a surprise. There's no doubt about that. It, it was, uh, I, I didn't expect anything like this, particularly, you know, just over a year into uh, a wonderful time in, in Providence with, with great people. So, um, so I guess my feelings are kind of A to Z. I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm saddened to leave Providence. I have uh, experienced such a warm welcome there. The people have been so wonderful. Um, and so I've been hearing from them a lot these last couple of days. And, um, but on the other hand, I, I'm a man under authority, and I respect the wisdom and the judgment of the Holy Father. I know that it is, uh, I mean, an honor and privilege to be a part of the Church of Boston. It's an, it's an enormous archdiocese, an important one with a, a long history. And, and so I, I feel kind of honored by that, challenged by that. Um, so I think my best thing to do right now is trust in Providence and, and go forward and, and do as the Holy Father asks in this new mission and pray and hope that the people of the Archdiocese of Boston will welcome me as, as, as I've been welcomed in Providence. I think they already have. There's great excitement from oh, everyone good. I speak good. with, good. I'm both inside yeah. and outside of Boston. And yeah. uh, Halloween Day will come <laughs> sooner <laughs> than you think. And I yeah. know it's a bit early on, but uh, what are your priorities as you look forward to being the Archbishop? You have to forgive me if I'm still a little vague on that, you know, because I feel, I feel like my first job really is to simply understand and learn. Um, you know, I, I, I've come to New England now, and I, but I was focused on Rhode Island, so I, I, have, to, I have to heal my ignorance, as it were, um, and I need to kind of hear folks who have spent a lifetime serving this church um, and hear their wisdom. I can tell you what some of the things are that are key or important to me in my life as a priest and as a bishop, right? So uh, I think maybe at the heart of it is uh, the call to evangelize, the call to mission. Um, I am a student of the scriptures. I, I, I love the Word of God. I love to preach the Word of God. Um, I think that, uh, it, it, you know, if, if I had a hope in Rhode Island, it was to kind of get people excited and passionate about the faith again. You know, there's a kind of, you know, we can kind of fall into, it becomes ordinary and every day. Um, you know, you've had a, an, an archbishop who is just extraordinary, so maybe, maybe Boston is already there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but I think evangelization would certainly be a key. Um, honestly, for me, um, and I don't mean this in a clerical sense, the priest, the priest, the priest. Um, I am acutely aware that uh, I cannot exercise the mission that the Holy Father has given me without being united to the priests of, of the archdiocese. They are the ones who administer the sacraments, preach the word. Uh, they are the ones on the ground with people every day. and. Um, so they are key, and, uh, and our shared uh, commitment, our authenticity, our humility before the Lord, our passion and zeal for the people and the proclamation of the gospel, those, those are key areas of importance to me, and so I will want to very early on get to know the priests. You know, I'll listen to their wisdom, um, but I think I want to kind of encourage all of us always, every day, go deeper, go deeper, uh, really look for that, uh, that that poverty that is Christ, that, that self-surrender uh, for, for the sake of his people. Um, I do speak Spanish, so I'm figuring that that's going to figure it's a big help. into this. You and know? you're studying Portuguese, too. Right? I'm trying on the Portuguese. I'm finding it harder, maybe because I'm older, you know. Uh, Spanish came more easily to me. Um, but I understand how important Portuguese is. Uh, it, it, I was learning it in Rhode Island, really, because it is important there, too. Uh, but I understand there's even more Portuguese speakers in the archdiocese. Um, you know, Catholic education, faith formation, uh, these are critical areas of concern for me. Um, so, I, again, I have to learn the system in Boston, but I'm going to guess that'll be an area I'll be paying a lot of attention to. Uh, so, the, you know, those are some of the key things, I think, for me. Um, uh, one difference for me is going to be the numbers of, of uh, men and women religious. I, I, the number is extraordinary. So. 
that'll be a, a blessing for me. Uh, you know, not that there weren't religious in, in uh, Providence. We had the Dominicans, for example, but the numbers are just so yeah. different. Everything is just bigger. It is. It's bigger. So also very different is to have brother bishops um, that are, you know, exercising that ministry of the auxiliary bishop. I had, you know, Bishop Tobin and Bishop Evans are great, um, you know, but they're, you know, they're retired now. So, so having yourself and the other auxiliary bishops will be a great blessing, I know. My sense, too, is that you are uh, passionately and comprehensively pro-life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the child in the womb, the mother, uh, victims and survivors of sexual abuse, people who are in the last stages of their life. I'm correct in that, correct? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it's funny, in our culture, we kind of, we, we kind of boil things mostly down to social or political context, right? But as you know, as a bishop, for us, the, the dignity, the sanctity of life, our reverence for life comes really out of the gospel itself. It's part of the proclamation of the gospel, like, that Christ is the, is the face of the God who is love, but he is also very, very much a mirror held up to us to show us who we truly are, who we're made to be. So it's in that, it's in that truth of Christ that we find the sacred dignity of every human life. So um, that's a, a major area of concern in our culture. And you already kind of gave us something of that spectrum that requires our attention. Um, and I think in a particular way, for the most vulnerable, that is the youngest among us, you know. Um, so life in the womb is, is under, I mean, just statistically under the most threat. Clearly there's threats now to the sick and to the elderly. Um, so I, I think we really do have to always be willing to witness to the beauty and the sanctity of life and really to, in some sense, nag at the culture to, to try to tweak the conscience, to, to remind them, you know, because I think everyone knows this in their hearts. Again, they, we, we boil it down to the politics and we forget that we know instinctively that life is precious. Yes. We know that, um, you know, and, and I think trying, trying to reawaken that in, in the wider culture uh, is, is an important gift that the church gives, and I certainly want to do my best to participate in that. I know you love the ocean. We've got plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> we got America's original public beach in Revere. Oh, yes? Okay. Yeah. I'll and, have to visit. Uh, uh, by the way, speaking of my brother priests, uh, one of the guys texted me the other day, and he had seen a picture of you with your, bla your yellow, lab. yellow lab, Agnes. Yeah, yeah. And he said, new archdiocesan regulations for Labradors and rectories? <laughs> Question mark? I don't know. Oh, is there currently a archdiocesan? I don't even know that. I don't even know either. <laughs> okay. But the fact yeah. is that I, we're all very much looking forward to meeting with you, and, um, working with you, and having you as our, our brother and shepherd. Thank and, you. Uh, and remember, now, it's the Boston Red Sox, ah. the New England Patriots, <laughs> the Boston Bruins, and the NBA champion, Boston Celtics. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that one because I love the coach. He's a... He's a graduate of Bishop Hendrick in high school. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, down in, in Warwick and in, in Rhode Island. And not only a great athlete and great coach, but he is a great man of integrity and faith uh, and a leader, really, I think. So, uh, so that gets me very excited to see that. So I was celebrating the Celtics very much. Um, on the, on this, the Red Sox and the Patriots, a tougher one for me, coming from New York originally. So I've been in New England a little while now. I've resisted converting. Um, so, you know... Let's let them win a World Series or Super Bowl, and maybe I'll convert. <laughs> It'll come. It'll come in time. But between now and then, um, please know that we're all praying for you uh, as Thank you make you. this transition, that God will give you the graces and the strength. Thank and uh, very much looking forward to Halloween this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of guff for that, I think. <laughs> Archbishop Thank you. Thank you. Rich Henning, thank, thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Bishop. Good to be with God you. Bless you. Thanks.